In this episode, I'm going to show you the entire process of using Adobe Lightroom presets from getting images from the camera into the computer, processing those images, and then exporting them all automatically using presets. Hey everybody, I'm Mark Wallace. Welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. Today we're going to be doing a ton of stuff and so it's a great time to grab a cup of coffee, sit in front of your computer and follow along. Now let me remind you if you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you don't miss a single thing on Adorama TV. Well we're talking about presets. The last episode I talked about where you can find different presets in Lightroom Classic. Today, we're gonna to be putting all of that into practice from getting images out of our camera, developing those images, making sure we have EXIF metadata, keywords, all that kind of stuff automatically applied. And then we're going to use some automatic settings to export those files and get them out to the world. It's an entire workflow start to finish. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a few presets. Now I'm going to be sort of zipping along and using the magic of editing to speed things up, but I want you to try to do this at home on your own Lightroom catalog so that you can get the benefits of this workflow. So the very first preset that I want to create, it's called a default preset, a default develop preset. And that tells Lightroom how to behave. And so when you bring your images in from your catalog, by default, Lightroom just has everything zeroed out. Well, if you're like me, every time I bring my photos in from um, like my Leica M10 here, I'm always doing the same things over and over. I'm setting my sharpening to a certain place. I'm setting my, uh, opening my shadows a bit, changing my blacks, and I'm setting my color profile to the color profile I like. I don't wanna have to do that every single time I load images in from my camera. I want Lightroom to just know that this is the camera I'm using and to do that. And for other cameras, I wanted to use the settings on my camera. So maybe I borrow a Sony or a Nikon or a, a Canon camera. I wanna use the settings that I've put in my camera to automatically show up in Lightroom. And so we can do that. So let's jump into Lightroom really fast and I'll show you how this works. I'm going to choose an image here. This is an image from my Leica M10. It doesn't really matter. And we'll go over to the develop module. What I've done here is I just want to show you this preset that I've already created. It's called my Leica M10 basic preset. So I've already made this preset. What I did was I changed my color profile to Leica M10 from normal Adobe color here. I have left pretty much everything else except for the uh, shadows. I have opened them up just a little bit. I've taken my blacks down just a little bit, increased my vibrance. And then one other thing that I've done here is I have set my sharpening to 70. That's usually where I like to have my settings set. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna take these settings and tell Lightroom anytime I import photos from this camera, use those settings. So we can do that by going into our preferences. So I'm gonna go into Lightroom, go to Lightroom Classic Preferences, and then there is a Presets tab here. Now the raw default, in other words, how Lightroom adjusts these uh, settings is Adobe default. So that's just basically flat. I don't wanna use that. So what I wanna do is I wanna tell Lightroom to use the camera settings for all of my cameras. So use the settings that uh, are on the, whatever the saturation is, whatever the contrast is that I've set on my camera. If possible, use that when you're processing the raw files. However, I wanna do something else here. There's this little uh, setting right here that says override master settings for specific cameras. I wanna select that because I know my Leica M10, and you can do this for any camera that is in your catalog. So I'm selecting my Leica M10, and I'm going to tell Light, uh, Lightroom to use a different preset. So I'm gonna say use this Leica M10 basic preset, and then I'll say create default. So here's what Lightroom is doing. For all cameras, it's going to try to use the camera settings, except for the Leica M10. If it sees my Leica M10, it's gonna apply the preset that I created for that. I can create another preset for if I have a Leicon D800. I can say, you know what? Let's use uh, a preset uh, black and white landscape for that guy. And if I have my Sony, blah, blah, blah. So you can have multiple camera specific settings. You can even 
have them not just for camera model, but you can show camera serial numbers and you can say, I want this to be applied to a specific Leica M10 with this serial number. So you can get really specific. I'm not going to do that for my catalog, but that's really good if you have, perhaps you have two different cameras. One, you always want to shoot high contrast black and white. The other one, you want to shoot color. And when you import your photos, you want Lightroom to automatically process those using presets that you've created. And so you can do that. And it's really cool. So you can really do a deep dive into this. We're going to keep it simple. So again, we've set this up for any camera. It's going to try to use the camera settings, except for my Leica M10. It's going to use the profile that I created because I know exactly how I want this camera to look. All right, we've got that set up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go create some more presets. We want to create uh, our first uh, EXIF data preset. We're going to use this to add copyright information, keywording information, location information, things specific to where I'm shooting. So I'm in uh, Micro Center right next to San Telmo, right downtown in Buenos Aires, Argentina, by the Obelisk. And so what I want to do is I want to create metadata for this neighborhood because I've been here for months and so all the images that I shoot here, I just want to have them already pre-populated. So we can do that really easily. Go to the library module and then we're going to go down here to our metadata. And then we have uh, under our metadata here, we have our presets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click edit presets. Now when I do that, I can create a custom preset. So I have all of these presets here. So I'm going to create a brand new preset. I'm going to be starting to type in some stuff. And by the power of editing, I've put in a bunch of stuff. So the GPS information, I have my copyright information here with my website, my address and email and contact information. I have the city and the state, the country is in here. I've also put in at the bottom here some keywords. And so that is all done. So what I'm going to do now is I will go in here and I can save this as a new preset. And so I'm going to save this as a preset and I'm going to call it Buenos Aires 2020. And I will create that. Okay, done. So now I can go over to my metadata and then there is my Buenos Aires 2020. If I click that, then all of this stuff is populated there. But I can use this later on to automate things. All right, so we've done, again, we've done a default preset. We've done an EXIF metadata preset. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to create an export preset that we're going to be using later. Again, we're just creating our presets right now. So how do we create an export preset? It's very simple. So again, let's dive into Lightroom. I'm going to go over here to File and then Export. And then this is normally the dialog box that you would use to export one file. But what I've done here is I've already populated this with some stuff. So what I have here is I have uh, this to be exported to a specific folder. This is a uh, folder called temp FB on my desktop. I want my file to be renamed to Mark Wallace, one of one or one of five, whatever. So if there's a series, it will automatically rename these images. I want this to be a JPEG, 80 uh, is the quality. I want this to be sRGB so anybody can see it. I want it to be resharpened, but I don't want it to be resized. I want these to be really large images. And then I want to include copyright information. And after it's done, I want to show this in Finder. Okay, so I'm going to test this by clicking export. And so what will happen is Lightroom will export this image using the settings that I have set up. Okay, let's take a look. So it has the proper name. If I hit space, I can see a preview. All right, all of that is good. So I'm going to delete that really fast. So now that we have this all set up and we know it's good, I'm going to go in again to File, Export. Now Lightroom has kept all of that information that it already entered, so we've already tested that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this as a preset. So what I'll do here is on the left-hand side, I'm going to click Add, and then this preset here, I'm just going to say Full Res Buenos Aires just so we have something. And then I'm going to put it in a folder. I want to put it in my user presets folder. So folders are great for organizing things. And I'll say create. Now you'll notice here that in my uh, 
presets. I've got a bunch of presets I've already made. These are specific things for exporting images for my blog or for SEO images or for throwing to Facebook or Instagram. So I don't have to resize them all the time. They're already there. Okay, now I can click done. All right, we have created a default preset for our camera settings. We have created an EXIF metadata preset for keywords and all kinds of stuff. We have created export presets. Now it's time to put all that stuff together and start getting images into Lightroom from a camera and then working with all this stuff that we have created. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an import preset. The cool thing about an import preset is it can put all these other presets inside of it. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing I need to do is grab my camera here. I'm going to open up uh, the bottom, take out the card. I've got a card reader here and then we're going to throw this in and start importing these images. But we're going to do that by setting up a preset. So again, let's hop into Lightroom. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to click down here on the import button. This is going to bring up, there's my Leica M. So here are all the photos there. Now what I want to do is I want to set this up to be able to be reused over and over again. So I know that I want my images to come from my Leica copied to my orange RAID. That's my external hard drive. I don't want to do uh, any previews or anything. So I'll do smart previews. I won't import suspected duplicates, but I have all this stuff sort of set up here. Now for my develop settings, I'm going to select none. Now that's really important. So I'm selecting none because remember, we already told Lightroom how to behave. It knows if it's importing images from my Leica M10 to use that M10 basic develop profile that I already created. If I use a Sony or uh, any other kind of camera, a Canon, whatever, it's going to try to use the camera settings. All those default profiles are going to be applied. We don't have to do anything. If we want to override those, if we want to say don't use the defaults, then we would select something. But since we do want to use the defaults, I'm going to say none because the work is already done. All right, so the next thing we want to do here is we want to organize that. So I've, I'm going to bring that into a folder um, down here. It's my photos folder. So I've already got all that stuff set up. So I want to go into an Argentina subfolder. The other thing I want to do is I want to use the metadata that I set up earlier. So I don't want to use 2020 Mark Wallace. I want to use this new one, this Buenos Aires 2020 that we just created. Now I'm not going to put keywords here because guess what? The keywords are already saved in this metadata preset. If I wanted to add additional keywords, I could do that. So I'm going to add tutorial, if I can spell that, tutorial here. So maybe I'll put in tutorial and maybe just for fun, I'll put in coffee. Okay. So it should have tutorial and coffee plus all the other uh, keywords that I've already set in. Now what I want to do is I'm not going to import these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and save the current settings as a new preset. So when I click that, it's going to say what preset do you want to call this? I'm going to say Buenos, whoops, Buenos Aires 2020. And then I will create that preset. Now, anytime I want to repeat these settings, all I have to do is click import, select Buenos Aires 2020, and everything else is going to be set up for me. So once that's done, now I'm going to click import and let Lightroom start doing its magic. All right, well, all of those photos are now in Lightroom and they've been processed the way that we set them up using our presets. So let's take a quick peek at how this has all worked out. So if we look at the very first image here, I'll just open this really quickly. I'm in the library module. First thing you can see is our saved preset says custom because of course it's using this marks preset like a basic M10 by default. That's what it, we told it to do. You can see here that our keywords have all the keywords that we added in our EXIF preset in addition to the, uh, the keywords that I added like coffee and tutorial. So those have also been added. That saves a ton of time. If we go down and look at our uh, EXIF data, you can see that my fake email and phone number, all that stuff is in there. All the location stuff is in there. So that has saved us a ton of time. We entered that once using our preset and then using that import preset, all of that stuff will be repeated over and over and over again anytime we import using those settings. It's a huge time saver. 
Let's also go look at our develop module because what we want to do now is start using presets to develop very, very quickly. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to first go through these images and pick the winners. All right, so I've picked really quickly the ones I think that we can work with. What I'll do is I'll go to attributes. I'll click on the flag here. Now we can start using our presets to quickly edit these images. So one of the images I sort of like here is these are these wine bottles here. Now I shoot into glass all the time and so I have a preset, so I'll go to my develop module, that I have created called reflection. So I'm just going to hover over that, I can click on that and already I like how that looks. I'll go to this next image here, I'll just click on reflection, bam, I've already created a look that I like. I can go in here and tweak that look though. So if I want to go in and perhaps add a, uh, a, a vignette to the side, I can do that. Or I could go in and maybe make this a little bit more contrasty. That looks sort of cool. The point is I can quickly use my preset to get it to a starting point that looks really good. Let's keep going because we can use the presets to do this really, really quickly. So let's look at this window here. I think this is something that probably with all these signs and stuff could be a nice black and white. So I'm going to use this uh, preset called crushed black and white. Uh, I don't know if I like that. Maybe this Medellin black and white. Eh, it looks a little bit better. So I'll use that. Let's go to uh, this image right here. This is sort of punchy. I like the colors in that. So let's go to the, the, to the develop module. And so what I can do here is I can go to a preset that's built right in. And so I'll do high contrast detail or vivid. So I'll just use this one right here is high contrast vivid and you get the idea. So we can really quickly go through here and start processing images. So how do we go from that to getting the images out to the real world? Well, guess what? We created a export preset. So let's use those. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab these wine bottles here and this uh, the posters on the board and this other photo that we created. So these three images here, I've selected those. Then I can go up here to file, export, and then I can either do export with preset and then I can say, you know what, just uh, export these as a large photo, but I want to do something different. I want to show you something that's even better than that. So I'm going to say export and then what I can do here is I can choose multiple exports and do it all at once. So what I'll do here is I'm going to go in and we're going to use the full res Buenos Aires uh, preset that we created. So I'm going to click on that. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to use this 1800 pixel large photo. So I'm going to do two different versions of these. So a full resolution and an 1800 pixel. And then now I can batch export. So I'm going to click batch export and it's going to ask me um, where I want to do these, if I want to have a custom text. So yeah, this is all set up. I like that. This is all good. Everything is exactly as we set it up. Export. Okay, now we have our images here. And so what we can do is we can maybe sort these by name. You can see here are the 1800 pixel uh, smaller images, which are cool. And notice that the file names are the default file name from the camera. Then I've got this renamed one and these are the uh, full resolution images. And so if I open these in preview, so I'll do that, open with preview, bam. And then I'll say uh, view 100%. So we'll say actual size. You can see these are full resolution images. And that is all there is to it. That's how you can use the power of presets to automate your entire workflow. The thing is you have to create your presets then bundle them into import presets. And once you have everything set up, it, com it makes everything very, very quick. And because it's set up the same way every time, everything is consistent from the camera to the computer out to the real world. That was a ton of stuff. I hope you were able to follow along, pause, add your different presets and try this. As you grow with your Lightroom, you will start having more and more and more presets for all kinds of things but it's going to benefit you a ton by doing that. Well, thanks again for joining me. Again, don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. Turn on the bell. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think, or if you have questions that I didn't answer, put those in the comments below, and we'll try to get back to you. Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you again next time.